Principles of Management 3025 Team Office Jam presented by Diego, Mitch, Carly, Benny, Carla, and Damien. Benny, carefully matching every child to their ideal monster to produce superior screen, refined into clean, dependable energy. Every time you turn something on, Monsters Incorporated is there. Hi, Monsters Incorporated. We're working for a better tomorrow. Team Office Jam chose to review Monsters, Inc. because we knew the movie had positive and negative managed concepts that could be reviewed and discussed. We wanted to identify each management concept in chronological order, so we needed to figure out a way to explain the events taking place in Monster City. Team Office Jam decided to implement a show where we act as the board of directors for Monsters, Inc., we reviewed actions characters had taken and broke down the positive and negative management techniques learned from principles of management class. Mike Wazowski. He is a punctual motivator and a leader in the company of Monsters, Inc. Mike implements the two-factor theory in the workplace, motivating employees on factors directly related to the job, such as recognition, achievement, growth, responsibility, and the nature of the work. The second factor being hygiene conditions and interpersonal factors on the job such as supervision, compensation, working conditions, relations with coworkers, and benefits. Mike also exhibits total quality management, total quality at the source. He believes that positive word of mouth and high efficiency will generate higher revenues for the company. James P. Sullivan, also referred as Sully, is the top producer of energy and best employee in the workplace. He sets the example of what a quality workers should perform like. He is reliable, dependable, and provides some of the best energy services Monster Inc. has to offer. Sully treats everyone with respect and is morally just. The next character is Randall. Randall is one of the main antagonists of Monsters Inc. He displays characteristics that are completely opposite to his co-worker Sully. Randall commits actions selfishly for his own career advantage and doesn't care about his co-workers. And this violates the moral rights approach. Henry J. Waternoose, the hidden antagonist of Monsters, Inc. He is the CEO of the company and Randall's co-accomplice. He fails to draw the line between too much control and too little control in his organization. He fails as a leader by exhibiting more interest in his bottom line numbers rather than the morale and ethical rights of the workplace. Roz. She is an older, sluggish employee. Roz is a key master, controller, and administrator for the main floor. She holds all the keys to the doors within Monsters Incorporated. She is also secretly an agent for the CDA. In the film Monsters, Inc., the CDA, or Child Detection Agency, are a health administration federal agency. They are a CIA-like group whose main job is to eliminate any type of contamination or violations of the company policy. This was actually one of my favorite episodes because, because we had so much to work with. The episode displays whistleblowing when Sully and Mike are making Mr. Waternoose aware of Randall's unethical and illegal plan, and at the same time you can see the wheels turning in Mr. Waternoose's head. He knows that he must create a solution for the greater good of the city, and has used the concept of satisficing to justify his action. He used the first possible idea to prevent the energy crisis. He clearly neglects the well-being of humans, and his moral compass has shown when he forcibly removes Sully and Mike. Damon does a great job in role playing a board member that has recognized negative management concepts. And here's a little bit of the episode for you to review. He's trying to kill us. This whole thing is Randall's fault. Randall? Yes, and we can take you to a secret lab, which is right here in this factory. How could this happen? How could this happen? This is Damon Glenn of Office Jam, and this is episode six of The Boardroom. This scene shows Mike and Sully using the concept of whistleblowing to Waternoose. Mike and Sully have shown Mr. Waternoose the Scream Extractor and revealed Randall's plot 
displaying proof of the illegal and unethical actions of Randall to the CEO of Monsters, Inc. Mike and Sully feel they have done their ethical duty by reporting the ethical dilemma, although in reality, Mr. Wardenus knew about the Scream Extractor plan of Randall's. This episode reviewed by Diego shows the strategic planning process to achieve goals. Team Office Jam has experienced multiple hardships when we lacked communication and didn't plan effectively. We have recognized that each day brings a new unexpected challenge. As managers, we must develop quick action plans when dealing with adversity. It is easy to lead when pressure is not applied, but true character is displayed on how you prepare and react to adversity. The team came to a conclusion that communication is the most important aspect of management or any relationship at that. Without communication, you are unable to receive information that may help you manage multiple personalities. As a manager, you must be able to juggle workload, personalities, wants and needs of people you oversee. I mean, the answer is never given to a manager, so you must actively seek it by understanding others and actively listening to others. As a team, we have all recognized our weaknesses more than our strength, which is the greatest thing we could ask for. As a team, we were lucky enough to become a cohesive unit from the initial introduction. The normal practices of a group project were skewed because every week we gathered more information to help us work with others and take a management role. I was unsure of how a group project would work with an online class. This was furthered by the fact that I attended a different campus than the other students and lived further away as well. As the class went on, I learned the importance of constant and continual communication to achieve a common goal. My recommendation is for future groups to communicate often and to assign distinct and well-defined tasks for each group member so that there is no confusion about what each member is to do. Now that this class is nearly over, um, I look back and I probably should have looked at the syllabus a little bit more um, so that I wasn't so shocked uh, with what this class expected from us as a group. Um, I could have been a little more prepared to tackle all the assignments in this class, so that was a lesson learned. I'm thankful for my group, considering it helped uh, me and a lot of the other group members out a lot along the way. We definitely have some future management uh, or future leaders in our, in our team office room. Um, to be honest, if you 
you don't have the discipline and the dedication to take an online class, um, I would not recommend this class. I don't say that in the sense of scaring you away from this class. Um, it's never a bad thing to get out of your comfort zone or expand your horizons. But it's important to understand what needs to be done to complete this course. Um, working with your group is another key aspect of this class, and it will really help you if you get to meet your group in person. Starting from the point when I read the syllabus for this class, I was absolutely overwhelmed by the amount of work expected out of us. I thought that there was no way a group of people that never met before could accomplish this semester-long project. Looking back now, it has been a great learning experience working with an excellent team, and as a group, we have used our different strengths and collaborated to create an excellent presentation, in my opinion. My biggest recommendation to future students in this class is to start communication with your group on the first day the groups are assigned. This will ensure everyone gets plenty of time to toss out their ideas on how to effectively tackle this group project. Also, meeting in person is highly recommended in order to delegate tasks to each group member and to clear up any questions someone might have. Splitting up the work is key. When starting this project, I somewhat was nervous for what was to come. Reading the syllabus and understanding the extent of work and teamwork this class was to contain was a lot to take in. After getting to meet with my groupmates, organize the project, plan out, and execute the project has been extremely rewarding. My groupmates have all worked together in unison and successfully. As a team leader, my experience so far has been educational and gratifying. My recommendation for future students would be to really bond with your group and make sure the due dates are kept in mind. With a strong group communication and collaboration, assignments will equally be delegated out and done successfully. The syllabus and examples of assignments are also beneficial to know how to complete the assignments. I am hesitant about online classes because of the lack of physical attendance with the teacher and working with group members. However, the class has demonstrated how to execute projects and goals together in a timely manner without necessarily meeting each other on a daily basis. Although this class has its own set of trials and tribulations, it has taught me to be prompt and communicative. My biggest recommendation for future students is to get your work done way ahead of time and highlight the main topics along the chapters as you go so you retain that information a little better when you go to apply them either to yourself or the project. Communication is key in any course of management and always keep your group informed along the way. Going into this, I was really skeptical with groups with an online class. So I tend to really trust no one, but I did understand the concept because it is management. Um, I went into this very scared because it's very technologically advanced. I didn't even have a, an Instagram, but lo and behold, I'm here on iMovie, and I still don't know how this happened. I recommend future students create a cohesive bond from the get-go um, to be a great manager. You cannot harp on the past. You do have to communicate with your team and develop trust overnight. Go into every situation with an open mind and perspective. Um, communication is the key to success, so figure out a platform that will benefit your team. 